Welcome to the 10 biggest design mistakes that I have seen most commonly in my career. So stay tuned as we discuss these common mistakes and how you can avoid them. In the number one position, all position, magpie design. Magpie design is a term that I came up with years ago to describe homeowners going out and finding this shiny object over here and that shiny object over there, bringing them all home and then being confused as to why it doesn't quite feel right and the items don't necessarily work well together. Instead, think of creating a focal point or even focusing on something that we would call eclectic design, which is where you will choose very, very carefully curated one or two pieces that you allow to be the showcase or the central star of your design, as opposed to heaping in all kinds of things like a magpie. Two, overboard. Thinking that if a little bit is good, then a lot is better. This is when you go to HomeSense or your favorite home accessories spot and you bring home everything that you find interesting and attractive. You place it everywhere in your living room and then you let it all stay. In order for design to be effective, you need moments of focus, so items to rest the eye on. And then you also need moments of negative space or the absence of objects. So it's walking this balance between the two that is truly good design and not overboard. Design mistake number three, being meek or playing it overly safe. Goethe said, genius has boldness, power, and magic in it, and it is as true of design as it is of anything else in life. I'll give you an example. I knew a lady who did everything in the home she was building in brown because she was nervous about making a mistake and she thought, well, if I use brown, everything will match. But what happened is it ended up looking like the inside of a chocolate bar. In between the brown flooring, the brown leather furniture, the brown cabinets, the brown countertop, and then the brown rug, it just melded all together and it had no character, no personality, and no depth. She was trying to play it safe. So don't make this mistake in your home. Design mistake number four wrong or incorrect proportions. This is huge. Ha ha. <laughs> I cracked myself up. Okay. Design mistake number four, incorrect or completely wrong proportions. I see this all the time. And perhaps you've had this experience. You go, you fall in love with this beautiful sofa in this 40,000 square foot showroom, and it looks like it's just the right size. You get it delivered, you try and put other pieces with it, and you just can't quite figure out why it doesn't feel right. That's because it is probably overly large for your space. And this is such a common mistake. So make sure that the pieces that you purchase have a relationship both to your overall space and then to each other. Don't put a monster 96 inch long, 42 inch deep sofa opposite skinny camp chairs. It's just not going to work. Mistake number five, too many opinions or too many cooks in the kitchen. I have some unsolicited advice for you. If you don't like their style, don't ask their opinion. If you are going to embark on a design project and you want someone else's opinion, choose one person whose style you really trust and want to emulate and ask them for their opinion. Please, please don't Take a survey of everyone you know, gather all their opinions up, and then try to figure out how you're going to make sense of it all. It doesn't work. Design, good design, takes a singular point of view well executed. Listen to yourself and think about how you want your home to feel. That's a wonderful guide to use to follow you through all the decisions that you will make to lead you to that place. Number six, failing to set a deadline for yourself. There are 
thousands of design options that you can look at and you can have Pinterest pages and look at websites and go on and on and on and stay in indecision land forever looking at beautiful rooms, beautiful objects. The world is full of beautiful things. So while you are playing in your creative sphere and looking at all these beautiful things, I would also invite you to also summon your inner project manager and put some boundaries around yourself in terms of budget, in terms of timing, and also in terms of perhaps color scheme, just to give you a narrower, tighter field to choose from and allow you to treat it like your own project, almost like you're the designer and you're the project manager all in one person. Design mistake number seven, continuing to shop after you've made decisions and commitments. This is a very human thing that people will do. And it reflects a, a, almost a lack of confidence in the decisions that you've made. So trust yourself. If you've fallen in love with something, even if nobody else really likes it, it doesn't matter. It's your home and you should love your home. So go with your gut, trust the decisions that you've made and continue to build from there. Carry photographs of the items that you have already selected, carry measurements, cut, you know, fabric swatches, color samples, whatever you need to help to gather in the remaining objects that you might want to add into the room, but trust what you've done and continue. Number eight, blindly following trends. Coco Chanel said something to the effect of trends come and go, style is eternal. So make sure that you are editing the amount of trend influenced decisions relative to your home. This is especially important around building materials because they're expensive decisions that you're going to have to live with for a very, very long time. So don't just take the tile that the person in the tile store says, oh, this is the hot new thing and you've got to have it. Think carefully about how it works in your overall scheme and also whether or not it reflects your personal style. Number nine, lacking clarity around your style. This is something that almost everyone struggles with. We help clients with this every single day. It can be helpful to think about what it is that you don't like and then look at things that are perhaps the opposite of that. It can also be really um, helpful to look at a particular painting that you have in your home that you absolutely love. I also will sometimes go have a peek in people's closets to see what colors they're attracted to and what they feel good in. Those can be excellent places to begin to get clues as to what your style thread is. The other thing, of course, is Pinterest boards and, and mood boards and all of those things. But then to narrow those, those images and to think about them a little bit differently um, look for the common threads in them. And the, the through thread will often run through your wardrobe and through pieces of art or sculpture that you might choose for your home as well. So don't just look at interior design magazines. Look at this broader sense of your personal style. Number 10, not finishing. We want to finish well. So I'm going to teach you the difference between a room that is furnished and taking it to being a room that is finished. Here's a quick primer. Imagine you have a dark piece of furniture. I'm going to add in this beautiful boucle as a textural layer in this room. Then I might add a little bit of a sparkle or a shimmer in a window covering, could be a beautiful sheer, something that's a bit diaphanous and will reflect some light and also add some dimension to the space. Then I would add in a pop of drama, even in a monochromatic pattern in perhaps a couple of occasional chairs. Then a beautiful soft fluffy pillow, a bit of gold, and a tiny bit of pattern on the walls gives you ah, the piece de resistance, a beautifully finished room. And number 11, bonus tip, 
If you're hiring a designer, don't hire a designer based purely on their looks. Oh, sorry, I don't mean these looks, I mean those looks. Yes, it's important that you find their expressions of style attractive and that they speak to you, but it also is a very personal relationship. So if you are working with a design or decor professional, make sure that you feel seen, heard, understood, and safe, that they are actually working to channel your style as opposed to imposing theirs upon you. Thanks so much for joining us today. It's been super fun putting these tips together. If you have other questions or ideas or things that you've learned the hard way in designing or decorating your own home, we would love to hear them, add them to the comments and stay tuned. We'll see you soon.